my name is Chad Haney with Industrial Equipment Company here in Houston, Texas. Industrial Equipment Company has been an authorized stocking distributor with FireEye for over 45 years. And today, I would like to provide an overview on one of FireEye's flame scanners. This particular model is FireEye's Insight 95 series flame scanner. This model is 95UVS2-1, which is a UV only flame scanner. This Insight flame scanner is also available in an IR only scanner, as well as a dual scanner using a combination of both UV and infrared. The dual type scanner in this series, that model number is a 95DSS2-1. The FireEye Insight Type 95 series flame scanners require a microprocessor based flame scanner utilizing solid state UV or IR or a combination of both UV and infrared. The FireEye Insight Flame Scanner incorporates an internal flame relay, therefore eliminating the need to utilize a remote flame amplifier. These flame scanners require 24 volt DC for your input power. These scanners incorporate a 12 pin cable, which you can see on my test stand. The 12 pin cable is wired to my 24 volt DC power supply and it offers the ability to utilize a quick disconnect at the flame scanner. This particular quick disconnect is a straight type quick disconnect. You can also utilize a right angle connector with the 12 pin cable. This FireEye 95 series flame scanner does not require a mechanical shutter. All self-checking is done electronic. You can see here on my demo, this FireEye Insight scanner consists of an eight character alphanumeric LED display and a four push button keypad to enable the end user to view operating parameters and select set points. Now what I would like to demonstrate is how to set up a 95 series flame scanner. One of the most important things to remember is when you receive a new inside flame scanner, the scanner will not see a flame. There is some calibration and setup required uh, before using this flame scanner. All of the FireEye Insight flame scanners have a password that is set up from the factory before shipping. The password that is set up from the factory is 0205. So the very first thing that you will do to set up a flame scanner is enter the password from the keypad to get into the scanner. And to do that, you're going to hit your down arrow key until you get to password. Then you're going to press the select button and then you're going to enter your password. To move over to the next digit, you're going to hit the program key, then you're going to go up to two, hit the program key, hit the program key, go up to five, hit the program key again, and the display is going to read password verified. Now I'm going to set up my flame scanner and I'm going to hit the down arrow key until I get to edit. Now I'm going to press the select button. And then I'm going to scroll down to file copy. When I get to file copy, I'm going to hit select. And now what I want to do is scroll down until I get to F1. F1 are pre-configured parameters that are set up from the manufacturer. So when I copy the F1 file over to A, I'm going to set up the scanner at its most sensitive state. 
So when I get to F1, I'm going to hit program and I'm going to take the parameters that are set up from F1 and I'm going to copy them over to the A file. Now I'm going to hit the program key and it's going to say file copied. Now what I'm going to do is hit the down arrow key and then I'm going to go to exit and hit select and then I'm going to scroll down using the down arrow key until I get to auto tune. When I get to auto tune I'm going to hit the select key and you'll see on your screen that it'll, the scanner will read aim scanner. When you see aim scanner you're going to hit select and now to simulate my flame I'm going to use a UV strobe light. I'm going to turn my strobe light on and when I turn my strobe light on you're going to see on the display a UV value of 27. So this is my aim. We would like a minimum of 10 on the aim feature. So now I'm going to hit select and I'm going to scroll down to learn on. When I get to learn on I'm going to hit the select button again and then the display is going to tell me to run my or set up my flame at low fire then press program. So I have my flame on at low fire now I'm going to hit the program key and it's going to take about 15 seconds to complete the learn on process. You can see it counting down. Once the learn on is complete the display will let you know. Now I'm going to scroll down to learn off. When I get to learn off I'm going to hit the select button now the display is going to tell me to turn my flame off. Now the scanner is going to learn the non-presence of a flame. So I have my strobe light off. Now I'm going to hit the select button. Now the display is going to tell me to turn my flame off and hit the program key. And we're going to count down again for 15 seconds. Learn off is complete. Now I'm going to hit the select button. Now I'm going to scroll to exit and hit select. And then I'm going to go to my flame quality screen and I'm going to turn my flame back on to verify that I see flame. And now you can see on my display I have a flame quality of 100. So I am now in full operation. So now we have completed the auto-tune portion. Basically performing the learn on and learn off operations within the flame scanner. Now I would like to show you how to set up your flame failure response time. So from my flame quality screen I'm going to scroll down to password and I'm going to enter my password again. Now I'm going to scroll down to the edit menu and hit select and then I'm going to scroll down to FFRT. The flame failure response time is programmable between 1 and 4 seconds. When I get to FFRT I'm going to hit select and right now my flame failure response time is set up for 1 second. I'm going to change the FFRT by scrolling up to 2 and after I get to 2 I'm going to hit the program key and I've just changed my FFRT parameter to 2 seconds. Now I'm going to scroll down and get back into the main menu. I'm going to go to exit and hit select. 
and I'm going to go back to my flame quality screen. There's my flame quality of 100. So that is an overview of how to set up a FireEye Insight 95 series flame scanner. After you complete the initial setup from what we just demonstrated, you may be required to go back into the flame scanner and change your UV gain or frequency settings. This demonstration was for a single burner application. If you have a multi, multiple burner application, consult with industrial equipment company or the FireEye Bulletin on how to complete a setup using a multi-burner application. Thank you very much for your time.